I'm really sick of talking about guitars. Let's talk about drums. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Me and Adrian have been focused on our podcast, so it's nice to to do a, a video again. First, I want to start off by just for those of you who know, and for those of you who may not know, uh, you know, my mom did pass away. I just want to thank everybody for their well wishes. The messages, the outpouring of support and love has been more than I could have ever imagined. And this is from friends, people I don't even know. I actually originally was going to make a list and then kind of thank those who reached out in in unique and and, um, different ways, but the list got too long. So for those of you who reached out, I mean, from everywhere, from YouTube, from Instagram, Facebook, direct message, phone call, you name it, the outpouring has been unreal and it really does i know a lot of people say i know words don't matter but they do and they help quite a bit so thank you still going through it it's it it was a tough moment in my life probably actually not probably definitely the worst day of my life trying to take it a day at a time nobody should ever have to experience that or or go through that it without getting into detail it was just a very 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 difficult moment in my life there's still so much for me and my family to do but we're coping we're dealing with it the best that we can but again just want to thank you all because that support your words do matter so thank you so today I really wanted to talk about drums I'm always I got into this really bad habit of just focusing on guitars and um, yeah I'm over it, tired of it. We'll do something in guitars later on. So let's talk about drums. You know, I've got a couple of some of my nearest and dearest friends, Eric and Nick, they're brothers. A couple of other people that I know who have just repeatedly said like, when are you gonna do something on drums? And and I haven't, and so now it's about time that I do. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I have done drums and in terms of recording and what I like best and why and what other options are out there. I don't think people realize the various ways that you can put drums on a track. And of course, it's also dependent a lot on the style of music, but then again, not really. I will start off by saying that nothing can take the place of a well-miked set of drums in a nice room. Nothing, nothing, no matter what I've done, nothing can take the place of that. Is it time consuming? Yes. Is it difficult? Absolutely. But the end result and just the art of it is nothing can compare. So when we get into looking at what I do most of the time in the studio nowadays, it's out of convenience. Also just taking advantage and leveraging the technology that actually exists for recording drums. Something that if we went back 10, 20 years ago didn't exist. And so I come from the old school way of recording drums, which is you always have to mic everything up. When I first started, I had the world's worst mics. Most of my friends had the world's worst drum sets, worst room environments, typically a garage. But we somehow made it work. Did they come out sounding okay? Sometimes, sometimes they came out sounding great, better than you would expect. It was just a lot of experimentation. Now I'm able to cut that process down to like a fraction of the amount of time. And again, it's out of convenience. The result is still pretty darn good. It serves its purpose. But even based around what I do, there's still other ways to record drums that I have done historically. And I'll talk a little bit about those in a little bit. So when I first started recording drums, I remember I had a mixer. We used to mic up all the drums as many as we can because I was poor and my mics weren't very good. Sometimes we would improvise like we would do, for example, one mic that would pick up both the snare and the hi-hats. Yeah, it's like that's sacrilegious in the world of miking drums. But that's what we used to do to get by. You know, we did a kick mic, sometimes a mic that would mic up the front two toms and then if somebody had four toms another mic that would mic up the lower two toms really almost never used overheads because i couldn't afford them but that's how we used to do it i used to do 
live sound from time to time. And when you do live sound in really crappy venues, sometimes they'll only mic up your kick and your snare and everything else is just kind of whatever people can hear, they can hear. So I came from that world. And so when we were recording drums, it was like, okay, we got three mics or we got four mics. How are we gonna use it? Hey, can we borrow a mic from somebody? And then another uh, do not do this, we would EQ the drums going directly into the mixer. And I did this for a long time. I would EQ them and so the way they recorded, that's the way they were set because I would usually put them on one stereo track. So I would try to get all the volumes and all the EQs and everything just right and then put it into a stereo track and that was it. And that was usually because, I mean, I started off and this is dating myself, it's gonna make me look really old. But I started off using, my very first mixer was a four track cassette recorder. Eventually I was able to move on. I got an eight track and digital recorder that actually took these like floppy disk looking things. And then I moved up into, I think it was an 18 track actual digital recorder, but it only recorded on the hard drive of the unit itself. And, and then, you know, I just continued to progress. So it was always experimenting and trying to figure out different ways to record drums. Eventually, I got to a point where you don't really necessarily worry so much about EQing the drums going in for the recording, but perhaps sometimes for the ear and just to kind of get those mic placements just right to where you know that going forward in post-production, you can work with drums. Good thing is I don't even have to worry about that anymore. Now, does that mean I'll never do it again? No, absolutely. I love doing it. If I ever get an actual band that is really wanting to go all out on their recording, I will actually take the time to mic up the drums and use all the great mics that I have now because that's really the only time they get any use and um, we'll go to town on them. I will tell you though, just miking drums alone, you're looking at a couple of days. If you're gonna do it right, you've gotta make sure you've got the right room for it. And then even when you get everything just right, something will go weird and all of a sudden you'll, uh, a mic might be bumped and moved out of place. Drums might go out of tune. Something might just be a little bit off. So it's just a matter of getting things where you need to get them and keeping them there throughout the whole time of recording. Let's go over some of the things that I have done beyond just miking drums. Right now you have drum programming one of the worst that I used to use a lot because I got lazy and actually got really good at it, keyboard drums. <sighs> then there's something else that even uh, I still use from time to time today. It's called drum replacement. So it's where you do all that, you mic up the drums and everything, but you replace the drums with samples. Let's say that I find a sample or I want to create my own sample. Let's say I have a friend that has an amazing kick drum and I'm like, I want that kick drum on this album. I could literally take that kick drum, put it in any room that I want, mic it up exactly how I want it, and I can sample that kick drum. Once I sample that kick drum, I can have an artist record their drums how they typically do, and then I can actually replace their kick drum or even blend together with their original kick drum, that sampled kick. People have no idea. It's it's tough, I'm really good at doing it because I've done it a lot. And the results are actually kind of like a best of both worlds because you're getting a little bit of that electronic element because it's a sample, but you're also still, I always blend, so you're still blending in the original drums. So you're still getting their sound uh, with that drum replacement. But sometimes when you're when you're mixing and the drums just happen to, to be a little off and you know that you're not gonna be able to go back and re-record those drums, it's a really good way to fix things up and to get things sounding good. And lastly, what I use now is I use an Alesis Strike Pro Kit. It's an electronic drums that I use with a couple of programs that allow me to actually virtually be able to mic up the drums. The mic allows me to really uh, manipulate the room sound, the reverb. It allows me to do pretty much everything that you could do physically micing a drum, but virtually. And if I were to show you a mic drum set versus electronic drum set, it's gotten so good that I don't know if you'd necessarily be able to tell. And that's what I use now. There's a lot of cheap drum sets out there. I remember my first electronic drum set was an Alesis. I don't remember what, but it wasn't very good. I mean, I felt like I was playing on a kid's 
drum set. But the Elisa Strike Pro, one of the reasons why I got that one in particular is because it looks and it's the same size and it feels like a real drum set. And when I play it, the way I'm able to manipulate those tones to get them just right, I mean, you're even able to go as far as finding artists who work with some of these programs and they'll go into these great studios worldwide and they'll sample their drums and you can actually purchase those samples and you can use those amazing tones in your music and it saves a lot of time a lot of the guesswork and you really it's like having somebody do all the hard work for you and then you just show up and play and you get to reap all the benefits it's an interesting way that things have changed in the world of drums there's still no replacement for traditional miking but uh let's take a look at my drums all right guys so here we are this is my drum set this is what i love and what i use in the studio So right here already look at the the hi hats and you can see that they're they're like a rubber. They feel good. They don't it's not the same. It also is good for your neighbors. Um, you don't bother anybody in the house. I love it. It's just I don't know. I'm sure the mic is picking up like the piddle paddle coming from the sticks. But when you separate that, obviously you don't record that sound when you do the drums. So when you separate that, you get the pure hi-hat sound. And right now I just have it on a basic drum set. That snare, I mean, it feels like a real snare. And it sounds like a real snare. Even the little ghost notes. So this setup's kind of, um, I have more symbols and stuff. I just haven't added them. I didn't feel the need to add them, but you know, I've got my hi-hat, crash, ride, three toms. And I added an extra tom, it's a low tom. And then, Another crash. No, I think that's a China symbol. Yeah. I also have a double bass pedal. It's not the best, but when you want to do double bass, it does the trick. Tom sound good. cool thing about this is that if you want if you want to do a punk song you want to do a metal song you want to do jazz something experimental there's so many different types of drum tones that you can use again this is one of the most basic i don't think i've ever used this one on any sort of recording i'm playing like absolute crap today kind of like guitar i suck The 
drums you're hearing are from the program itself, not from the actual drum, what do you want to call it, module. The drum module offers a really cool set of drums. Probably like a hundred kits in there, I don't even know. They're great, but even though you can manipulate like the triggers, you could do all kinds of little things, they still don't sound as good as using some sort of program to essentially take the, what's being read off the triggers and manipulating the sound over there on whatever DAW that you're using. One of the really cool parts of this is that, let's just say that I'm recording drums and I'm like, whatever. Let's say I'm not on beat, or let's say I do an extra kick I didn't like or shouldn't have been there, or let's say my snare is a little bit off time. I can actually go into the program, either delete the extra kick, I can slide the snare over. I could change the velocity. So let's say that I hit the, you know, the snare a little weak at one point. So it's like that second snare hit, I can actually go in there and change the velocity to make it match the other two, the one before and the one after. Same thing with kicks, cymbals. I mean, you name it, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, I feel like I'm playing a real kit. It sounds like I'm playing a real kit. I can manipulate it the same way I would. It's just behind the computer instead of in front of the actual kit itself. I can separate everything. That's one thing I didn't mention before is I, I mentioned how I would record everything onto the mixer and I would put it into a stereo track. Obviously, when you record drums, you want everything to be on an individual track. As a matter of fact, I'll even record a couple of kick drum tracks with different mics and then blend those mics together to make a fuller kick drum sound. Same thing with hot, with a snare. I'll do a snare mic on top and a snare mic on the bottom. You do room mics, you do overheads, you do, you name it. Every single piece of the drums has its own individual track that you can manipulate and you can mix to make this and then put it together for this overall sound, right? Well, the same thing can be said for these. Everything is completely separate. As a matter of fact, the program has its own mixer and then you can bring those everything from that program into your DAW. So I use Pro Tools, bring everything. So I manipulate everything there, then I bring it in and I manipulate everything there. And then I can record uh, into a stereo track. You know, you can compress everything individually, compress the overall mix, um, add whatever you wanna add just to tweak it to make it sound good. And voila, you have a really good sounding drum set. The only thing you need is a really good sounding drummer. Because without that, the drum doesn't matter what you do. The drums are going to sound like crap. Whew, I'm out of breath. I'm a fat kid these days. Pandemic did not do me any favors. Playing drums, it's a workout these days. I really wanted this video to be more of an overview than anything. To kind of put out there the ideas and the options that people can use in recording. I really wanted to more than anything show what I'm using at the moment. I can do separate videos that show you each other option. For example, programming drums, which I'm not a fan of. To me, programming drums comes into play if you're doing electronic music. Can you program drums for rock music or anything else? Yeah, absolutely you can. Now, I mean, electronic drums are cheating, <laughs> but programming drums is really cheating in my opinion, but whatever. If it works for you, it works for you. Not everybody can play drums, but maybe somebody can program drums. I just would not make it one of my go-tos, especially if I'm doing something beyond like maybe a demo or something. I would not do that as a project for a band that really wants a quality recording. Keyboard drums. I don't even think I have to make a video on that. It's literally one key is a kick, another one is a snare, hi-hat, and you sit there and you go like, Oh, and then there's beatboxing too. I can definitely make another video going a little bit further into what's on the computer and how I'm able to manipulate the drums virtually on there. But I just really wanted to show you all what I'm using right now, what works for me, how convenient it is, how good it actually sounds, and how it's a viable option to the traditional method of miking drums. So anyhow, it was really nice to do a video on drums instead of guitars. Got sick of doing videos on guitars and hearing all the comments from all the guitar players out there. One thing I've learned is that guitar players are assholes. Drummers are usually the more laid back, cool dudes that are like, hey man, just give me some drums and some sticks and I'll 
and I'll play. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments, let us know what you think. If you have questions, if there's something that you want me to touch on, you know I'll touch on it. That's what she said. Again, thank you all for the support in regards to my mom's passing. I cannot thank you all enough for that. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to listen to our podcast. We are, I think, the number one place that it's that you can go to that's the quickest and the easiest right now is Spotify. I always upload them here on YouTube so you can listen there. Sometimes on YouTube, I add some little visual goodies as if you were listening to the last one or the one before the last you get a sneak peek of our guitar series the raven that's coming out go back to episode i believe it was episode four thank you guys so much for watching and you will see me next time bye